Good evening. My name is Rob Pitchford. I'm the board president for the Historical Society of Palm Desert. Normally at this time we start up our Friday night lecture series. Normally. Due to COVID, we are running uh, repeats of previous lectures on our new YouTube channel, the Historical Society of Palm Desert. If you like our videos, please like and subscribe and to get notifications, hit the bell. You can also share our videos. If you would like to join HSPD, go to www.hspd.org and hit the join button. We hope you enjoy tonight's presentation. This evening we present The History of Silver Spur Ranch by Luke Leshner, one of our more popular lectures. As many of you have heard, on October 11th, we lost Rose Romer. If you had attended any of our lectures in the past, you would have been greeted by Rose and probably had some of her cookies and coffee. Her help at our HSPD functions was always appreciated. Tonight, I'd like to dedicate tonight's lecture to Rose Romer. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Brett and the entire Romer family. She will be greatly missed. Hi, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Um, so tonight, we're really going to talk about the untold and totally true history of Silver Spur Ranch. And I really say untold because much of what is in here tonight has never been talked about before. And as a matter of fact, a lot of what's been published by Silver Spur, about Silver Spur already isn't always um, the most correct. And so this is kind of the result of a 10-year part-time process started by other neighbors. And um, I joined on this process a couple years ago, and ever since then we've been finding things left and right. And we kind of exhausted a lot of our archives. And for that reason, um, there are some people here tonight I'd first like to thank um, for really their contributions and the fundamental things that we've learned from them. Um, first being Vic Merovish. Thank you very much, Vic. Thank you. Um, Gary and Mary Wexler, thank you very much. And Kim Harrison, I don't know if you're here, but raise your hand if you are. Hi, Kim, thank you very much, too. So anyways, um, I'm really going to start off this lecture ironically talking about water in the desert. And so um, historically, this area was labeled on government maps as sand hole. And um, let me find my laser pointer right here. But here we have Highway 111 and Highway 74. And um, in all the official maps, it was labeled a sand hole. And that was because all the water moved west to east across this big slope. And it created this alluvial fan. And all of that water um, would really gather at this wash area, um, present day 111. And that is really where a lot of the earliest agricultural um, farms and developments were because of that. It was easy to access water. And so you can see right here, um, this is the slope where that Silver Spur is presently located. But here really to all the agricultural action that's going on right here. And no one really wanted the slope because it was so hard to um, find water um, until 1943. And that's when General George Patton comes out here um, looking to recreate the conditions of West Africa. And the slope that Silver Spur is located on um, was actually where they did a lot of training exercises. And it's reported that the government drilled two times in Deep Canyon area, um, 90 feet both time, uh, times, and struck no water whatsoever. And eventually, they actually had to truck water um, up the slope to the soldiers. And um, many of you are familiar with Frank Bogart, a really early Coachella Valley pioneer. And um, I'll give you a moment to read this, but um, Bogart was involved in post-war Palm Springs mostly and was also later an original founder of Thunderbird Country Club. But it is true that Cliff Henderson bought land between Highway 111 and um, the Wash. But it's also true that um, a lot of what he bought was not at all on the slope. So I'll give you a moment for that. Okay. 
Frank Falcard. Okay. And so here we have a really early um, illustration of Palm Desert. This is probably mid 40s. And what's really apparent is um, Cliff Henderson's vision for Palm Desert. Um, but much of that is due to the fact that they found water, and he did that by hiring um, Roscoe Moss, um, a friend who said that as long as there was snow on the mountaintops, there would be water in Palm Desert. And so he pays Roscoe Moss in the mid-40s $19,000 to drill, and this time they drill 612 feet before they strike any water. And um, you can only imagine how deep they'd have to drill for uh, Silver Spur Ranch. <laughs> And um, also present in this um, picture, we can really see the absence of Silver Spur and Marrakesh, um, which both were on the top of this slope, the southernmost portion. So Marrakesh is right here. This is um, Portola. And Silver Spur would eventually encompass all of this land over here. And so the people that bought it were the Schwilks. And um, so let's meet the Schwilks. Um, this was Harold Adrian Schwilk. Um, known by Adrian, but he went by aid to his close friends. Um, he was 41 years old by the time um, of his third marriage. He had three kids, and he was the Sears um, men's department manager um, in San Bernardino. And on the side, he started building um, homes, but mostly he started out just as plastering and just typical brickwork, but eventually um, would act as the designer and builder for all of his homes across um, San Bernardino area. And he had a pretty good sense of design, but he would work with draftsmen to get the projects created. And the other big player was um, Mercedes Schwilk, known as Dees. Um, she was part of a very wealthy um, New York family. Um, her mother, Frances, remarried um, a very wealthy Standard Oil businessman after um, her first husband dies, and it is then that they moved to New York City. Um, she was very well-traveled, she was cultured, uh, she was beautiful, and she was very um, well-known in the New York area almost. And their family was listed in the Social um, Register of New York. Here it is right here. And um, they end up moving to a New Jersey suburb where they have um, an, a live-in maid, and they have their third daughter, Jane. Okay. And so we're sure that Mercedes was asked um, her hand at marriage many times, but in 1951, she ties a knot with Harold, and they kind of become a dynamic couple. <laughs> okay. um, the year is 1950, and they end up moving to Newport Beach. Um, they're part of the very prestigious Balboa Bay Club. And um, Adrian, living a life he's really kind of only imagining, is kind of thinking up some new ideas. <laughs> Father, maybe, in this man. <laughs> oh. Father may buy pinless diaper. Santa Ana, California. A. Schwilk is manufacturing a pinless diaper which he expects to make him a hero among papas. <laughs> Invented by Miss J.C. Slusser of Pomona, California, the new diaper may be adjusted to various sizes and held fast by snaps. You get the point. <laughs> really good. And um, by 1953, Adrian is, um, and Mercedes are in the Palm Desert area. Um, they're building spec homes, and they end up working in Palm Springs, um, Ranch and Mirage, briefly with um, Ronald Button. And this is one of the smaller developments off of Deep Canyon and Fairway. And um, if you've ever driven up Panorama or Paracela, these are the small houses that line the streets. But, you know, two years later, they're looking for a bigger place to move. But first, before we get into their time on the slope, I want to kind of give a good comparison. This is Edgar Bergen, um, who had land in the wash, and he had a very successful time with that land. And this is Edward Nolan. He was married to Albacina Nolan, who had land on the slope. And um, he was so unhappy with that marriage, in fact, that he ends up murdering his mistress. And this is his San Quentin photo. <laughs> That's 
Um, but here is really the most fundamental document to Silver Spur Ranch. And this is Mercedes' handwritten account of all the original expenses, land, lots. And ironically, this thing was actually held together by a band-aid. <laughs> and so we can see just some of their first expenses, all their escrow accounts. But where the best information lies is their land holdings, and this accounts for 430 of the acres. Um, 196 of those acres come from Alvacina Nolan and her wonderful husband, Edward. <laughs> but they pay $606,000 just for the land, which is equivalent to about $7 million in today's dollars. And that's just land. They have to pay $22,000 to build a well and just have water on the property. And um, in the end, they end up spending about $1,400 per acre. And um, only 10 years previous, 1946, um, Cliff Henderson ends up buying Palm Desert for $26 an acre. <laughs> and so that, of course, is before a stick of wood even goes up. But whose money is paying for all of this? And the answer is Mercedes with her trust fund, really, and it was really a, a vision of both of them. I mean, we have an early letter heading there that says, Mercedes Schwilk, trail boss. Adrian Schwilk, straw boss. <laughs> but before we get into the ranch, let's just kind of settle a couple of myths. This is Bing Crosby. He lived at the ranch. He was never a developer of the ranch. He never was involved directly in the affairs of the ranch. Um, what he really wanted, though, was a secluded place. And his friend Pete Petito knew just the place. And this is him with um, real estate agent Tony Burke, who was the first um, exclusive agent for Silver Spur Ranch. And this is his wife, Ann Burke. And Tony got his start really at the El Mirador Hotel in Palm Springs because he was a publicity guy. And he knew that in order to sell something good, you had to have a really good person to represent it. So Bing was kind of used as a calling card for many years in the future. And so what Bing does is he buys 16 acres at the, at the southernmost part, which is now located in modern-day Ironwood Country Club. And he subdivides the land to his three friends, Bill Morrow, Jimmy Van Heusen, and Pete Petito, who are all producers or work with him, and they end up building their own houses on each of the land. And um, here's his house in Thunderbird, and I actually only realized this a few days ago, but Bing actually built the same exact house in Silver Spur as he did in Thunderbird. And I actually bought this postcard on eBay thinking that it was just mislabeled as Palm Springs because that happens all the time. Um, based on these two palm trees right here, and he actually puts the same exact two palm trees in the same place. <laughs> and, um, but there was really one issue with that, and that was the new wife, Catherine Crosby. Um, Catherine did not like a secluded desert retreat. She was, I think, 19 years old at the time of their marriage. And um, for that reason, it's also true that Marilyn Monroe might have spent more time at the ranch than Catherine Crosby ever did. And this is a true story, by the way. Um, but they did send a nice thank you note. Dear Mr. Schwilk, your red roses grace the table for our first dinner at home. We are truly grateful, Catherine and Bing Crosby. And here's a note to Adrian Schwilk. And I also think it's ironic that you can't see it on here, but they put it in Thunderbird letterheading. <laughs> Another myth, um, Smoke Tree Ranch. Um, Smoke Tree Ranch, while it might have had a lot of the Western motifs um, shared, um, it was also fundamentally different from Silver Spur Ranch. They sold um, big, ha big lots to um, really big people who would hire um, their own architects. Right here we have Walt Disney's William Cody designed home. And Cody would go on to be one of the pioneers of modern architecture. And um, architects like Richard Harrison and Donald Wexler end up forming their own partnership while working with um, Cody, known as Wexler and Harrison. We didn't have Walt Disney, but we had Walt Disney's secretary in Silver Spur Ranch. 
she lived on Siesta Trail. And here's our sign, this two, three signs. Um, Adrian Schwilk, um, Smoke Tree Ranch was really about building this magnificent um, estate homes, but Adrian, he loved the desert and that was his selling point for Silver Spur Ranch. He loved rock roofs, he hated curbs, and if the county would have let him, he would have just left dirt roads probably. And so this is Adrian and Mercedes um, in one of the original press photos from the Palm Springs Villager. And so we'll be talking about the very beginning, but you know, we're at this point two years later after they've already bought land. We already know they're seven, almost $700,000 into it um, with land costs. And that's before they've really built anything. They still need to build clubhouses and, and um, um, model homes and pay for the logos and all sorts of other things. And so Adrian was into building his own houses. Here's a, a historic architectural um, review committee minute. Are you selling any lots? Mainly selling houses, prefer it that way. And so the first house that goes in in Silver Spur Ranch is the Adrian designed um, model home in a temporary sales office. And it's pink to this day, and I still believe that it was pink when it was originally built. Let me grab some water. The first street that goes in is Sun Corral, and this is on Sun Corral. But that's before they build the real sales office, which is still there today at the entrance to Portola. And um, this one is pink, not by choice, but by old photo. And it was here that you would actually park your car at the Silver Spur office, and they would take you up in a pink Jeep uh, to see the model homes. And you can actually see in the very um, background um, a little pink model home, too. And so the second house that goes in is Jerry Malone's house on Sun Corral as well. And um, another Adrian design, um, Jerry Malone was a prominent early Palm Desert businessman who owned the first gas station, Jerry Malone's um, Union 76, I believe. And um, he didn't live in it till the late 50s, but while that was happening, um, Tony Burke also gets a house. I showed you Tony a little bit earlier. And um, I apologize for this watermark. I didn't want to pay $100 a photo for this. And well, architectural historians here, you understand this. But you'll be seeing this watermark a few times in the presentation. Um, but also, this is 1958. And you can see in the background um, these tied up brand new palm trees. And it's the same year that Adrian puts in 100 palm trees all over the ranch. And many of them are still there today, actually. Um, and here are some of the typical early designs. Um, we always dubbed it the weird window right here. Um, all of his designs have this weird window. I don't know why. Here's another one. Here's our weird window. Uh, but also, he really kind of keeps the same footprint to all of his houses. And he also has a lot of this three windows in the corner. Here's another one that he builds um, with the same three windows in this corner. Probably of an Adrian. <laughs> but this isn't a Silver Spur Ranch home, but rather a really Palm Springs home that Adrian designs. And um, I'm sure you'd be, be very happy to know that this house just sold below a million dollars. And I'm sure some of you at the same design should be happy about that as well. <laughs> and earlier I showed you a um, poolside homes ad. Here's one of the poolside homes, this same very familiar footprint. But um, Deez's trust fund is kind of running out, and they need a bigger plan. And so they go to this architect, Earl Kaltenbach. And Kaltenbach um, designs them four models, um, the ranch, uh, farmhouse, contemporary, and I believe the last one was the glamour home. Um, and here's one of the original um, releases and folders for it. Smart homes for a smart address, Silver Spur Ranch. But Kaltenbach was really known because um, he had worked with the development Rossmore to design and lay out all of that. And in previous years, he had actually worked on the urban planning of Disney's Tomorrowland, which is an interesting note. 
And for those of you who live in the ranch, you'll see a lot of the same motifs used in some of the earlier houses. So these, are, these next four photos are his houses in Rossmore, and then we'll move on to his designs in Silver Spur. And so this is the Salem, and you can buy this house for a whopping $18,300. This was the New Englander model, somewhere in the same. And then he has some more contemporary models. And all these photos are taken by um, the famous architectural photographer Maynard Parker of Architectural Digest. And here's another one through the wormhole. But in Silver Spur, there were two models built by um, Carlton Bach for Adrian, the one of which is the contemporary home. And this one was featured in a 1958 issue of Pictorial California. And here it is, right here. And it has kind of the same features as I showed you a moment ago of the house Carlton Bach designs in Rossmore. And the interiors were all done by Vinette Curtis, who works with Silver Spur for many years to come. And here's the house today, it still stands. Um, he also builds the Glamour Home, which is one of them, for 24000 And here's one of the illustrations for it in an earlier ad. But here's one today, and you can see this very distinct roof line. Step over. Oh, I got to man the computer. Um, another one is the Desert Country Home, and the photo I'll show you of this isn't my house, but this is actually the model house that I live in. And um, I'm more of a mid-century modern person myself, but this is classic Silver Spur Ranch nonetheless, so I accept it. <laughs> And this one was also featured um, in Pictorial California in the same edition. Uh, this one instead with early American and French provincial motifs. And here's one today. But somewhere between the illustration, the model building, and the construction of new houses, which was typical of the time, they lose some of their detailing. Um, and the last Carlton Bach model was the farmhouse. And while we don't have an early illustration of it, this is an early ad depicting it, and here is the same one today. There we go. But business is doing well, but Adrian still wants bigger plans, and so that's why he turns to the investor Saul Lesser. Um, and this article is somewhat misleading. It says property is acquired. Um, Saul Lesser buys into um, Silver Spur Ranch properties, but he. Um, doesn't necessarily have the controlling stake, or at least all of it. And Saul was a very prominent um, movie guy in Hollywood who developed a lot of the early Tarzan movies. And he had a house in Palm Springs in the 40s, and he had dabbled in Palm Springs um, real estate back and forth, and even a kind of planned but unbuilt community in Indio. Um, this is about 1959. But, um, I kind of like this poster, Tarzan's Desert Mystery. <laughs> One of the movies he originally um, produces. But Kreisel does two things. Um, the first is which is he buys in, but the second is that he goes um, completely out on all of his designs and he really goes hardcore. And he hires William Kreisel to do it. So many of you are familiar with William Kreisel of Palm Springs here tonight. But this is an early um, rendering of the street layout. And modern day Silver Spur Ranch is basically concentrated right here. Um, buckboard does not even go through, but you can really see the extent to which Kreisel wants to um, expand Silver Spur along with Saul. And here's an original lot map of sold properties, subdivided properties, and built houses. And I show you this because here's Bing's house. Bing, P. Petito, and Bill Morrow's house are, are all up here. And um, Saul also puts in a couple of streets for his Kreisel model homes. He puts in Sun Lane and Moon, and this is where a lot of them are concentrated, right here. And you can't really see it, but there's some blue circles. And we believe those mean um, planned Kreisel homes. Um, later, um, None of those are really built except for eight, seven of which are in the ranch and one of which I'll be telling you about that's outside of the ranch. But later, um, the developer Charles White would come in the 60s and fill in those lots. 
And here's a closer up picture of that lot map. And um, I took a visit to the Getty with Kim Houskin, if she's here. And um, one of the things that we found were all the original renderings for the ranch and stables that they were going to build. None of these were actually ever built, but this is the overview. I'll take you through a little close up. And so what was planned was um, first a kind of a horse riding and training ring over here. Um, we had a central clubhouse, tennis courts surrounding it. Here are some more tennis courts over here. And um, here are the stables where you were to put your horses. And Silver Spur Ranch did have stables even before Saul came on and envisioned this. Um, and you could have horses there for some time. And they're really at the top of Portola where Mesa View um, splits off today is where the original stables were located. And so we're not sure if Kreisel designed two um, centers for Silver Spur, but here's another one of them. And this is the more extravagant of the two. Same thing, um, stables, riding ring, tennis courts, lots of parking, swimming pool, and a clubhouse. Here's the clubhouse they designed. Too bad we don't have that. How about we increase our HOA dues? Just kidding. And here's another rendering of it. Got the stables right here. You could eat your dinner and watch out on the riding and training of horses, your pool to the left of it. And here's the interior, the floating fireplace. Um, none of that is built, but what is built are um, eight Chrysler designed houses. Um, evidence uh, uh, keeps showing that six models were built, um, five of which are accounted for in the ranch. And so here are some of the earliest brochures that Chrysler um, provides. And so here are some of the Chryslers that stand in Silver Spur Ranch to this day, and there are seven in Silver Spur Ranch. Um, this is one of the flat, more um, pitched roof models with rat tails and this gorgeous courtyard, as all the Chryslers have. Luke, can you know what street you here? Yes, this is on um, Sun, Sun Lane. And the next um, few houses I'm going to show you are going to be on Sun Lane and Siesta Trail. And so here's another design um, of Chrysler, and this one is also widely used in a lot of his Palm Springs neighborhoods, as are all the other models. But this one would originally have a um, little wood screen over these three windows. Here's another model, Chrysler model in the ranch. And this one's on Sun as well. And this house um, is another Silver Spur model on Siesta Trail. And this house is an interesting story because this is the model house that was put on the corner of Highway 111 and Portola where Heather James Art Gallery is today. And this is done under Saul. And so here's a photo of it. And so realistically, you would go in your Silver Spur Ranch model and you would buy your house in the glass sales office. And so we thought this one was lost, it was torn down, it was only on the lot for just over a year. But um, actually, it has a fascinating story. So the first thing that happens to it after the lease is up on the land is that they sell the pool to Tom Kaiser of Indio for one dollar. And it's his responsibility to take a crane, lift the pool out of the backyard, and move it to Indio. I hope Tom Kaiser has a nice pool. The second thing that happens is a prominent LA doctor buys the house and he moves it a couple blocks down, not far from where it is today. And we weren't sure where this house was either, but we found it. And here it is. And it's all boarded up and um, appropriately, it was a very rainy day when we took these photos. But um, it's in a very dilapidated state, all the windows are boarded up, but it's still there. And what amazes me, actually, is that even though they took off the original carport, the glass sales office is still there, and you can't totally see it, but it's this little square right here. And um, that was actually kept, I believe, because Dr. F.X. McDonald practiced out of this home, 
and you would go to the real estate office to get your, I think he was an eye doctor. This is on La Rea Street off of Portola. Actually, just about right there. And so the late 50s were really a great time for architecture in the ranch. And because they needed to find money to build houses and fund their dream, they would also sell lots. And so if you were an architect or a person who had an architect that wanted to build a house, you really could if you would buy a lot. And so one of the first architects that builds a home is Walter S. White. And some of you are familiar with the um, Miles C. Bates house, which was just recently saved and restored. This is the same architect. And this house had this really wonderful um, grasshopper almost roof. And while the grasshopper roof was almost not built, the house is still there today, but with a more simple flat roof, and it's still beautiful. This is the end of Buckboard Trail, across from the substation. Um, and also, so Roy Fay was a very prominent Palm Springs developer of Wexler Homes. And just at the end of El Rancho Vistas, while he's negotiating for his next big project, he comes up to Silver Spur Ranch and builds two Wexler Harrison designed homes. This is a photo of him in the ranch with one of the Wexler designed homes. And here's a photo of the house today. And this is at the end of Sun um, Trail that cuts into Sun Corral. And um, the original family who bought it in the late 50s still lives in it to this day. And in the same kitchen, same everything, really wonderful family. Um, the other one across the street hasn't fared as well. It was pushed out, the front was pushed out some time ago. But we believe that it was really just one of the classic clear story models of Wexler Homes. Another local architect, Harold Bissner, um, also works in Silver Spur Ranch. And Harold Bissner was a very um, early architect of Palm Desert condominiums. If any of you know um, Suns and, um, Sands and Shadows on Highway 74, or Village Greens off a of Deep Canyon, both of those were Harold Bissner designs. And so this is a house he built on, on Buckboard Trail, and we're not sure if the plans changed or it's just been altered, but this is the house today. And so really the last home that's built in this time is built by Cliff May. And so Cliff May, really the pioneer of California ranch styles, builds this home for, I believe, Thomas Yearns at the end of 1960. And um, it still looks pretty great to this day. And this is the end of 1960, and three big things really happen. The first thing is that Adrian Schwilk sells all of his interest um, to, in Silver Spur Ranch to Saul Lesser. And um, what changes by this is not, well, while Saul buys in in 1959, a year previous, Saul buys into the ranch. This time Saul buys all of Silver Spur properties and the ranch. And so this means Saul has all of the land. Um, what he does next is he builds a sport corral home. Oh, not a, sorry, excuse me, not a home, uh, just a recreation area. And basically the sports corral was just a pool, um, a putting green, and shuffleboard. <laughs> But also at the same time, Saul becomes involved in this very controversial, political, expensive project in Hollywood. Now he's an original Hollywood guy, and so he hires, or he's, he's the president of the nonprofit that hires William Pereira to design the Hollywood Film Museum. And this is a huge um, project and endeavor, and it, there was all these crazy stories of how they had to evict all of these people who had lived on the original land, and it was really a huge deal, um, to the point where it consumes a lot of his time, and he has a heart attack and almost dies because of it. But um, fortunately, Saul lives to be 90 years old and dies a very rich man in 1980. Um, so what Adrian does next is he moves just a mile down the street to Shadow Mountain Fairway Cottages. And if you're from the Fairway Cottages tonight, now is really your time because the Fairway Cottages were really conceived in 1959 by Clifford Henderson. And um, Cliff was getting pretty old and at the time he had already sold most of his land to the PD Sales Corp who had um, really spurred a whole new era of development. But he kind of needs someone like Adrian to buy in and take on this big task because the land needs to be rezoned. And that was a huge issue. And historically, 
This area of Shadow Mountain Club was known because it was where all the original um, residents of Palm Desert lived. And so here's the Shadow Mountain Clubhouse, but in the background um, we have this beautiful golf course um, that was really world renowned. And it was really um, the, a requirement when you built a house here that you would build a really big and a really beautiful house. And so here is a early 50s spread on some of the earliest home sites. And just in this photo, we have homes designed by Albert Frey, Cliff May, Walter White, all of the big names. And so really, I want to take a moment. Um, we had always heard rumors that the Shadow Mountain Fairway Cottages were designed by someone other than Adrian Schwilk. And that probably, that was really a reality because Cliff Henderson needed him to. And in order to appease all of these residents, he needed to build something that was beautiful. And so I'm gonna read these because you can't really say it, um, um, see it up here, but this is a text exchange at 11 p.m. And by this point, the person I work with, the other neighbor and I who research all of this, have been through the archive dozens of times and we've really exhausted everything. So the messages say, oh wait, I have an article that says fairway cottages were designed by Wexler. Then a modern real estate listing says the cottages, um, cottages for sale are rumored to be Wexler. To which I replied, yeah, they are full of expletive. I've read that too because I know Adrian would never pay for that. Hmm, honestly, it shouldn't be that hard to track down. I've only read it on real estate listings ever, never seen that before. I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> and the articles kept coming. And Aid built Silver Spurge Ranch and Shadow Mountain Fairway Cottage at the same time. This was later. Um, no way he paid Wexlers for almost 100 houses. And then the next article comes in, and really, um, thank you, Mercedes Schwilk, for being so charitable because if we didn't um, have the announcement for your children's charity, we would have never known that the Shadow Mountain Fairway Cottages were, in fact, designed by Wexler and Harrison. And in 1960, Wexler and Harrison had just finished up the um, nationally renowned steel houses in Palm Springs. And so really, um, Wexler and Harrison was an interesting firm after their split from William Cody. Um, they came to have this cooperative firm, but mostly each partner was responsible for their individual projects. Wexler was more interested in doing community and um, public projects, and Harrison was more into doing residential, um, just like Shadow Mountain Fairway Cottages. And so with the construction loan in tow, um, but Sterling, Sterling Bank, um, the beautiful Richard Harrison designed plans for Wexler and Harrison, and a successful rezoning, he sets out on building um, the Shadow Mountain Fairway Cottages. And really all is well with the Shadow Mountain Fairway Cottages. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, um, Saul Lesser is starting to consider selling all of the property. And with the success um, of, of the Fairway Cottages, Adrian decides to um, get back into that, and he goes back to the ranch this time, a year later, or actually two years later, I'm sorry, and he buys in for two and a half million dollars. And this actually um, does not even include the 600 original acres. This is only the land that the ranch sits on today. So let you, me remind you that in 1946, Henderson pays $26 per acre. Yeah. 10 years later, Adrian, pay, Adrian and Mercedes pay $1,400 per acre. And in 1962, he pays $14,000 an acre. In a matter of less than 20 years, it's... Um, this was Adrian. Adrian paid that, yeah. And so he gets on, he, you know, he is so successful at the Fairway Cottages that he wants to do exactly the same thing in Silver Spur, surround a beautiful golf course with beautifully designed Richard Harrison homes. And he goes about this robust plan, um, and he, once he builds houses all of Lower Buckboard, he builds Birdie Way, all of Feather Trail, 
Um, and this extension is never built, but it, as you can see, it was a part of his ambitious plans. And um, he even fills in uh, like probably six or so lots within the rest of Silver Spur Ranch. And so um, it is really with a lot of delight tonight that I announce that um, because of his time between Shadow Mountain Fairway Cottages and Silver Spur Ranch um, and nearly 200 homes built, this means that Palm Desert is home to the most Richard Harrison designed homes in the entire world. And this is completely new and unknown and it brings me a lot of delight to tell you guys that tonight. <laughs> And so here are some of the um, homes that he builds up in Silver Spur. And I should note, by this time in 1962, Richard Harrison and Donald Wexler have split and gone their own ways. And um, Richard Harrison goes into more residential, and I'm sure this probably was his first project even. And Donald Wexler goes on to a lot of his community buildings. And this is Lower Buckboard. And so you can see here these beautiful two palms. It's almost symmetrical. And um, let me show you some of the rest of Silver Spur. Oh, there you go. Richard Harrison. There you go. And you have a, I think that you have a model home because it's pink. And it was on the corner and it was angled. And so here's a Richard Harrison home. This is on the corner of Birdie Way and Lower Buckboard. And so um, the model for the bigger residential homes designed by Harrison are on Broken Arrow Trail. And this is one of them, and it's this really wonderful. Um, he uses a lot of breeze block and different types of um, decorative facades on his homes. And so he, then he moves up to Feather Trail, and he, Adrian builds up all of Feather Trail with Richard Harrison homes. And here are some of them. This one's on the corner of uh, Feather Trail and um, Silver Spur Trail. Here's another one on Feather Trail. <laughs> and here's the flat roof model. And um, it had this same breeze block as Fairway Cottages and the cutout with palm trees sticking through it. This really wonderful design. And um, he loved cutouts, so here are some more duplexes. A grass across the street from the pink house. This is also Birdie Way at Lower Buckboard Trail. <laughs> And you know, here's some more cutouts of the palm trees, and a lot of the residential homes had this in them. And not only did um, Adrian use the same architect from Fairway Cottages and Silver Spur, but the houses are actually just identical to each other. So um, on the left we have Shadow Mountain and Fairway Cottages, and on the right we have Silver Spur properties. We always deem this the pop out, and on all of the Richard Harrison homes there is the pop out. And from the exterior to the most intricate details in the interior, they're all precisely the same. So take, for example, the kitchens with the, um, the little buffet and serving table and the same built-ins, I might add, on the side. And even in the bathrooms, the same exact decorative tile. And that's the same for those who can't see it over there. Let me grab some water. And so you can see right here what really gets built, and it's all of Lower Buckboard Trail, Birdie Trail, this is a 1963 aerial by the way, Feather Trail, and then some houses on Broken Arrow, filled them in on a couple on the circle, and all over the ranch. Oh, Luke? Yeah. That picture shows why the houses on the other side of the Silver Spur Trail are in the ranch. Right. Can you repeat it? Oh, no, no. So, all of the, the houses on um, Upper Silver Spur Trail, Feather Trail, are part of the ranch and they were part of the um, Richard Harrison phase. And actually during this time I should add that the house count in Silver Spur nearly doubles because of this. And at the same time, Adrian also hires his good friend architect Robert Ricciardi to design a clubhouse. And Silver Spur has a clubhouse and many of us don't know that. I didn't know that only about a year ago but it's located in Corsican Villas nowadays. But here it is, and for a while, St. Margaret's Church, because Robert Ricciardi, that's how they met Adrian, was to the church, 
they would um, have all of their uh, Sunday services here. And here's the pool. Where, where is this? This is in Corsican Villas. Where is that? Um, this is right off of Portola, connected to Silver Spur Ranch. Robert Ricciardi, yes. Let's see. And so all is well, really, at this time. And here's Adrian right here um, on the new. Oh, I, should, I forgot to mention that with the clubhouse, he also builds a pitch and putt golf course. And that is also on the same grounds as Corsican, but it was um, grazed when they put in the villas. So they, own um, they own the clubhouse now. Yeah. And so actually, right here, we have Randall Henderson and a lot of all the, um, the realtors of Palm Desert. And there are a ton of houses in Palm, a um, ton of houses going up in Silver Spur. But it all kind of becomes too good to be true. Because what happens in Palm Desert in um, the early 1960s is that there's a huge glut of building. And it's very similar to um, what, ha what is being built in Silver Spur Ranch. Just in this southwest area of Palm Desert, this is um, El Paseo right here in Highway 11. Um, William, Kreisel and George William Kreisel designed and built by George Holstein. Um, Sandpiper, um, and then also Sands and Shadows, which go in at the same time, designed by architect um, Harold Bissner. And even around Silver Spur Ranch, um, Marrakesh is going in just a couple blocks down. Um, El, Dorado, um, El Dorado Highlands is developed by Stanton Grammar all going in. That's about another 60 homes. And so Adrian is really faced by, with this. And um, in 1965, he loses the fairway cottages to the ranch, um, excuse me, to the bank, Sterling um, Bank Co Corporation. And um, he comes back, he's still in the ranch, and he really kind of gives it his all and tries to expand with a golf course lease on CVWD land. And um, that, he didn't end up getting that land, but Saul Lesser got it for Ironwood um, Country Club later. And actually, going back to this slide, I also should mention that Saul owned all of this around Silver Spur at this point. Adrian only owned the footprint that we have to this day. And so um, a year later, Adrian ultimately loses Silver Spur to the bank. And um, it's the bank that ends up selling the clubhouse area to Corsican Villas. And I always like to say that when the ranch lost Adrian, the ranch lost its vision because this article is a total um, paradox to the desert beauty that Adrian had really preached so many years earlier. And so Adrian still has another 15 years left to live, and so he kind of becomes a spokesperson for a modular homes company, and he ends up dying in 1980 at the age of 73. And Mercedes, um, uh, not long after Adrian's death, um, marries a very um, rich rancher, um, Harlan Kittle, and they bring a lot of um, joy to each other over the following years until she dies at the age of, I believe, 88 in 1997. And so really, Adrian and Mercedes together gave everything that they had for the ranch. They love the ranch. They're the reason we're so secluded that we have beautiful homes and beautiful boulevards. And we benefit from that today. So it is with this in mind that I call this conclusion. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, if you're a resident of Silver Spur Ranch, in the next few months, um, we've been compiling a historic um, survey of all of the original houses. And so if you have a house built before 1968, there's a good chance that we know the architect of it. And there's also a good chance it might be designed by Richard Harrison. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Right.